Okay, welcome back to another Moderator Prep Source Review. My name is Thane Cole Morgan. Uh, this is in preparation for a discussion on uh, national sovereignty, immigration, and populism with Dr. Cunliffe and Dr. Kaufman. Uh, so this is this time I'm going to be reviewing some sources uh, that basically try to understand, contextualize, and define populism from a more left-leaning or liberal elite uh, slant. And so what I'll go over, or actually rather before I go over that, the, the reason why I wanted to look at this is again just to widen uh, my understanding of the term populism because it is a very large term uh, and a broad broad term. And so this will kind of give an idea of how uh, the left and the liberal elite think of populism. So what I'm going to do is cover uh, the definition, the causes that they see uh, populism, the implications of populism, and then finally some solutions uh, for populism. Uh, and that's something maybe to start with is ultimately uh, this side uh, views populism negatively. It, it sees it as um, something that's bad and something that needs to be fixed. Uh, so we'll get into the definition. Um, the definition ultimately that they uh, believe is basically that populism is a theory of society that separates uh, elites on one hand uh, and then people on the other hand. And typically uh, the elites are, are corrupt and unredeemable and the people are pure and good. And um, you know, both, there's no sort of difference within each of these sections. These are sort of completely homogeneous and distinct groups. All elites are bad, all of the true people are good. Um, sometimes this, uh, the, you know, the left liberal leaning viewpoint will also add addendums to the definition uh, around identity, authority, or economics. Uh, on the identity side, what you'll typically hear is something like uh, white nationalists and populism. That Those two kind of go together. But the idea is that uh, the identity of the pure people group is what's being highlighted and that is the defining characteristic of that particular populist. Um, and then another one is authority. So, you know, for example, lots of people refer to Trump as an authoritarian or Bolsonaro as an authoritarian or, or whoever. And basically what this has to do with is that uh, a certain set of cultural beliefs, traditions, um, are enforced by the particular populist rather than allowing for a more pluralistic and open society. Uh, and then finally, there's the economic realm. I don't think this applies as much um, in the United States. It's, it's more with left-leaning populists, but it's this idea that the, um, well, that's not necessarily true with the United States. We do have some left populists. So they're just not really talked about as much, but the economic side of a populist really has to do with redistributing wealth from a uh, from the corrupt elite who has stolen or taken it inappropriately, and therefore it needs to be returned uh, to the rightful owners of the people. So that's kind of how uh, this group sees it. I will say I think it um, just this is me adding my own uh, interpretation here, but I, I think what this is ultimately looking at is okay, the Platonic and Arist. Uh, Aristotelian ideas of democracy. So if you go back and read the works of those two philosophers, they talk about democracy negatively as an unstable uh, sort of mass of people exerting a fanatical will on society in an unstable and bad way that ultimately results in tyranny. So the left liberal side, uh, left liberal elite side, I think is ultimately taking that track. Uh, that's how they see populism. So uh, the next section to go over is how, you know, what they think are the causes of this. And um, they really give five. So uh, the first is economics of globalization. So the, in a more globalized world, there's more competition. Uh, and this is especially affects people on the lower income side of things where uh, maybe more immigration is putting pressure on wages or cheap imports from other countries with lower wages put pressure on domestic producers at the lower end. And so there's this sort of left behind group uh, who hasn't 
really gotten uh, an equal or at least a more equal uh, slice of the globalization pie. Uh, the next is crisis. So this group believes crisis breeds opportunity. So in the end of the financial crisis, for example, populism becomes more credible. Uh, with more geopolitical instability around the world, populism also becomes more credible. There's this strongman idea that uh, that a populist desires a strong and authoritative person to bring stability to an unstable world. Uh, next is cultural backlash. So they do identify uh, populism coming into place with high amounts of um, progressive uh, social movements. So that creates a instability amongst the mass of the population who doesn't want to progress as fast or progress in a particular direction. Uh, so that can lead to uh, these populists coming in. Uh, this is also closely related with immigration, which they see as another cause, again, because it changes the cultural institutions, traditions, and norms of society. And so it uh, that destabilization uh, breeds the potential for a populist. And then finally, communication and media. This goes hand in hand, I think, with uh, the, the view that most people on the left and liberal side have, which is that people who want populists in power are uneducated and they're just being messaged to in short and simple form over the media and it's their lack of education or lack of understanding of the danger of a populist that allows them to either be fooled for or uh, or even want in some cases so part of that has to do with uh, the fact that the left and liberal side will see uh, populists and people who vote for them as uh, as xenophobic for example and it's because they're uneducated about the about either the benefits of immigration or about how good other cultures can be and so as a result uh, we'll sort of uh, ignorantly vote for a communist or not a communist for a populist too many ists um, so uh, the last sort of cause I guess I'll add to is and this is um, a bit more me reading through the lines rather than things explicitly stated um, but there's this idea of uh, populism and hate being closely tied together. So the populace themselves are filled with hate and motivated by hate of some group or something. And the people that vote for them are also the same way. So it's this, uh, it, you know, hate and anger and disgruntlement are all part of the mix here for why, uh, for basically how populace acts and why people are going to vote for them. That's an, another part of what uh, this group thinks. So uh, next, moving on to implications. So the implications of populism, if it is allowed to run too rampant, according to this group, are one, economic harm. This kind of comes from the the, um, the deglobalizing that they believe is associated with populism and more of a nationalist outlook. If you become less globalized, then you know the economic pie shrinks, according to this argument, and so that will cause economic harm. Um, depending on who's calling out the populist, if they're calling out more of a left-wing populist, they actually might talk about the, the poor uh, command style um, and redistribution style things that might occur under a populist. So this is, I think, people who would maybe criticize more of the uh, South American populists uh, or someone like a Bernie Sanders and basically say, hey, look, their, pop their, their uh, economic decisions are going to cause a poor economic outcome and uh, so that's kind of where that one comes from uh, the next is the weakening of institutions so they see uh, populists as subverting or outright either subverting uh, changing or uh, just ignoring the existing institutions um, which they see as a bad thing because it's anti-rule of law and destabilizing uh, this ultimately leads to the potential for tyranny which is another thing that they see could happen. The populist leader, uh, you know, is, is supposed to work against existing institutions, and so therefore will try to install themselves as a uh, tyrannical leader over all of society. And then, uh, kind of again, coming back to the the hate uh, motivation, if there are more populists in power, then hate crimes and xenophobia and dislike of outgroups are also uh, potentially uh, going to increase with this uh with more populists in power so ultimately they see all these implications as heading in the wrong direction uh and that's kind of why they ultimately want 
a solution to not have populism. And that's basically where I'll end here, which is here are the, the sort of various solutions that are proposed are one, uh, and these are sort of in turn with the causes that, of populism. But the first one is uh, increase the amount of social safety nets. So the idea is if people are, are motivated by populism because of poor economic situations, well then give them more money, uh, give them more social safety nets, more services, and secure their economic situation. Uh, next, fight corruption. This takes you to the form of fighting corruption of the existing political elite, uh, which you know erodes the current system's credibility and therefore makes uh, populism more favorable, or fighting the corruption of particular populist actions themselves. Uh, next is to uh, tackle tax avoidance and tax evasion by elites. Again, this is um, it's seen as something that creates non-credibility with the current regime and therefore makes populism more appealing so that needs to be gotten rid of uh, break up monopolies again uh, if there's an imbalance between the elite and the great mass due to monopoly power then they need to be broken up because that gives uh, legitimacy to the populist message uh, invest in communication so this really means that um, what they're really saying here is that the existing regimes or the existing uh, non-populist entities need to get active on social media and activate their line of messaging to a population to basically make it more credible or at least compete with populist messaging. Um, I think this is why you'll sometimes get calls like in Canada for the regulation of social media or why you'll have um, particular non-profit groups in the United States who want to monitor social media. This is kind of where that comes from. Um, and then finally, uh, become more democratic. So there is some recognition that the lack of uh, accountability and the lack of addressing the needs of the, of the greater population is a non-democratic action and is ultimately part of, part of the fuel for the resentment of the current status quo. And so the solution is to actually just become more beholden and more... Uh, and just answer the call of your populace more so than uh, has been happening so far. Um, so anyway, that's, I think, in some how uh, the sort of left and liberal side of things sees populism as a threat that needs to be solved. Uh, it's got several causes, and uh, there are potentially solutions to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, so that's this one, and we'll do a few more soon.